What's up, sports fans? It's your man, D-Back. Speak your mind, sports talk. All right, check it out, man. I just want to talk about this real quick. Deontay Wilder. Basile Lomachenko. Cry with excuses, then demand a damn rematch. You know? And here's the thing. I don't think as much as... Vasil Lomachenko, Deontay Wilder's demanding that he should get his fight back and so forth. And we already know the story behind that. They felt as if Tyson Fury cheated. Whether they provided proof or not, this is what they feel. Look, Vasil Lomachenko, he's telling Teofimo basically to buck up and give me a rematch. He's not really demanding anything. But the fans, on the other hand, the fans, on the other hand, is what's interesting about all of this because there is a demand from the fans. And me personally, I think the fans must have lost their damn minds when it comes to Vasil Lomachenko or Deontay Wilder. And I'm going to start off this video with Deontay Wilder and, you know, his whole situation and everything uh, with Tyson Fury and the rematch, whether it be warranted or not. Um, and, you know, just go from the first fight. The first fight where Deontay Wilder found success. Uh, he knocked Tyson Fury down twice in this fight. This, this was the first knockdown here. Um, you know, Tyson Fury was winning the fight, but Deontay Wilder was able to knock him down. And the second time he knocked him down, it would appear that he knocked Tyson Fury out. Right here, this very picture here, I think. Well, this moment in time, Tyson Fury was out. Whether he got up or not, at this point here, he was out. And you got to say that Deontay Wilder knocked him out. Um, but the fight went to a draw, nevertheless. The fight went to a draw. And then these guys would engage in combat again. And a second fight. Now, the second fight didn't go so well for Deontay Wilder. Uh, you know, Fury was elusive, as we can see here. Had Wilder missing punches while landing his own. <laughs> As we can see here. Uh, and, you know, eventually he just bludgeoned Wilder. As we can also see here, Wilder's eyes starting to fatten up. And you know, eventually he put Wilder down on the canvas. And then he, and then he, you know, he stops Wilder. But here comes the conspiracy theories. You know, the glove being bent and, you know, what glove does that and, Fury was cheating, and this, that, and the third. So, you know, the fan base of Wilder start making excuses, and Deontay Wilder start making it, you know, accepting and pushing the same excuse. And he accuses Tyson Fury of cheating him, accuses his trainer, you know, accuses the referee Steele of being in on it, or uh, not Steele, but uh, Kenny Bayless of being in on it. Then he goes to demanding a, a Wilder Fury 3, a trilogy match. And that's where everything gets twisted. Because if you, if you have the proof that Fury cheated, it's not on Tyson Fury to prove that he didn't cheat. It's on you to go turn in the proof, submit the proof to the commission, the boxing commission, the sanctioning bodies, submit the proof that you have and tell them, here's my proof. He cheated. Uh, you guys need to strip him of that belt and give me my belt back. Second thing you need to do is take that same, that very same evidence to court, file a charge for attempted manslaughter, attempted murder, uh, 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 felonious assault and battery because he actually did hit you. Yeah, there's plenty of charges that you could take out on Tyson Fury for cheating you. Um, but if you're not going to do that, then that has nothing to do with the rematch. And then when we look at the rematch now, you have accused this man of cheating. You've challenged his integrity and credibility. And then you expect him to engage in a rematch. Now, you say you want him to honor his contract. Well, of course, we understand that it was a pandemic situation. Things got delayed. And I don't know if your camp is telling the truth and Bob Arum's telling the truth, but there seemed to have been a misunderstanding or disconnect with the contract situation, which means you guys had to take it to arbitration and take it into court and find out, you know, what's what. Now, 
the assumptions are that you and Fury will be fighting again because both of you guys talked about a similar date fighting this year in 2021. Fury fight got canceled in December, but you know, recently, you know, a whole lot of talks about Anthony Joshua and Fury going down for sure in 2021. And the question looms, the question looms with no proof provided, not saying that you don't have proof, but with no proof provided, with no proof uh, given to the commissions or to the police, you know, your claim of him cheating is just a claim. Outside of that, you cannot demand a rematch. You cannot come out complaining, crying, excuses making, and not taking your win like a real champ and then demand a rematch. You can't do that. You don't deserve it. Now, should Fury honor a rematch? Sure he should. He should wipe it clean, you know, get his name clean. Let me just go ahead and beat him up. I've always said, if you know, why not just go in there and fight Wilder again? You can beat him. You should feel confident you can beat him. You say you beat him twice, so just go in there and beat him again and then walk off into the sunset. I don't have any problem with Fury giving Wilder a rematch. I, you know, at first I was adverse to the fight, but actually now I would like to see the fight. That's not the point. The point is that Wilder, you cannot demand anything from Tyson Fury. You cannot demand a rematch after you come out making excuses over your loss, basically discrediting the man and take what he'd accomplish away. You know, just dis disgracing his name, saying that he had to cheat to win, and then expect him to work with you cordially in a business deal. It's just not going to work that way. So for that reason, and the fact that you could not beat him in that first fight, you know, you got him down on the canvas, but he got up. So you couldn't get the job done. Now the judges gave it a draw, you know. But in the second fight, you got stopped. You got stopped. So it's a draw and a stoppage. You don't deserve anything. Should Fury honor his rematch? Sure. But you don't deserve anything. If you're the big bad Wilder, you were supposed to knock him out in the second fight. If y'all had a rematch, you were supposed to knock him out again. And then that's it. No more Fury. But you couldn't get the job done. It went to a draw in the first fight. You got your ass beat in the second fight. You're making excuses about, uh, you know, egg weights and poison water and all of this nonsense instead of just taking your loss like a man, blaming Bayless and everything else. And then demanding a rematch. No, nope, doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way at all. And then we move on to Vasil Lomachenko. Vasil Lomachenko. Now, Vasil Lomachenko and his team comes out posting shots of Vasil Lomachenko. Look, woe is me. So hurt. All uh, injured up. After the Teal Fimo matchup. Here's the thing with this, guys. Excuse making. I don't care if it was valid or not, because this is what people try to say. You don't come out prior to the fight claiming you're 100%. You're going to put your skills on full display and send this kid back into the corner to his dad crying. You don't make that claim. And then once you cannot, once you take the first couple of shots in the first round, you, you start uh, practicing social distancing in the ring, right? Because you took those first couple of shots and didn't know that they were coming that hard. Then you started practicing social distancing in the ring, staying away from Teofimo for six rounds, right? And now you was 100%. Let's remember this, guys. He was 100% before the fight. He didn't do anything the first six rounds. So supposedly, either he was injured before the fight or he injured the shoulder in his fight. So your shoulder was no good for half of a fight? But you say you was 100%. See, and this is the thing. It's an excuse, man. Even if it was real, your team shouldn't have come out with these pictures. Because now it's an excuse when you go in there saying you're 100%. You do nothing for the first half of the fight. And then you claim shoulder injury at the end of the fight. 
I mean, the facts of the matter is the kid douched you up, Lomachenko. You know, you got fans out here talking about you technically got a TKO and you really didn't lose and what you'll do to Teofimo on the second fight, but they didn't feel that first punch. They didn't feel that first body shot in the first round, Lomachenko. You felt that first body shot. And that's why you practice social distancing for the first six rounds of that fight. You had to stay away from Teofimo. Now, you turned it up later in the fight. You did turn it up, and you made a go of it, a really good go of it. You know, you buzzed Teofimo a couple of times in those later rounds. He, I think he hurt you more than once, and then you ramrodded him with your head. But even, even still, you did a good job. Later in the fight, the problem is this. You said the judges bribed you. Your team put out shoulder injury pictures. So the judges bribed you, and you got shoulder injuries. But you said this kid wasn't going to be able to do anything to you, Loma. You was going to send him in the corner crying. And that's just not, that's just not what happened. He, he didn't go into the corner crying, Vasil Lomachenko. No. No, he didn't go into the corner crying at all. The kid went over to his corner. He he waited for the decision. And when the decision came, Vasil Lomachenko, that kid was holding all the marbles. It was the takeover. And you couldn't handle that. So, immediately after the post-fight, you say, you don't know, you got to go look at the film. You thought you won the fight, you know. So, you know, not really taking it like a man then. After that, your team comes out posting pictures. Vasil Lomachenko's hurt. This, that, and the third. Simple fact, the kid beat you, you know. Still not taking it like a man then. Still not taking it like a man. And then you go out. You go as far as to say, Vasil Lomachenko, you go as far as to say that Teofima Lopez or Bob Aram or whoever the hell had the judges under bribery. See, this is the ultimate excuse making and complaints. And there's either even a guy out there that says Teofimo has no honor in him. He's dishonorable. He's disgraceful. And what is Lomachenko for saying I'm 100%? I will put my skills on a full display rematch. I don't need a rematch to be him. Like, they don't talk about that. He arrogantly dismissed a rematch. 100% going to put his skills on full display. He gets in there, gets hit once in the first round, stays away, scared to death, right? I don't know what his fans were. What are they even thinking about? This is the great Lomachenko. These are guys that were saying Teofimo is not going to be able to do anything with the right hand and the, the shoulder roll. But then he goes in there, and their guy practices social distancing for six rounds, and they can't explain it. They don't talk about that. They don't understand that it was the power that Lomachenko felt in that first body shot in the first round that kept him at bay. He had to try to figure out how to get in, all right? But then Lomachenko, you say all of this, all of this before the fight. And then after the fight, the bribery's in. You don't think you lost the fight. Your team shows the shoulder injury, the excuse making, and now the rematch. And it's more or less Lomachenko fans demanding the rematch. But they're out of their mind. He arrogantly dismissed it. He showed no class and loss. You know, it's not about being happy. No, nobody's happy to lose. But you, you can still be a champion and show class in, in, in losing. He showed none. And now you guys are demanding a rematch. Teofimo doesn't have to fight Lomachenko. Now, would it be a good thing for Teofimo to fight Lomachenko? Yes! I would love to see Teofimo fight Lomachenko. Just like I would love to see Wilder and Fury get in there again. I would love to see it. But there's, there will be no demand. You idiots, they're talking about he needs to honor. So he doesn't need to honor anything. When when a guy was arrogant to you and told you he don't need a rematch with you, then there, there's no requirement for him to honor anything. You idiots. Okay? Think about it. I'm going to beat you up. I don't need no rematch. I don't need a rematch for you. 
and then you beat him, and then you're talking about honor. And the same guy that was that arrogant showed no class and loss. Man, go smack yourselves. There's no demand for Teofimo Lopez. There's no demand for Tyson Fury. Should they go fight these guys again? I agree with you guys on that. Teofimo should clear up the foolery with Lomachenko. I would love to see Teofimo fight Lomachenko, Devin Haney, any order, and then go to 140. Just those two guys, and then go to 140. Ryan don't deserve it. Tank don't deserve it. Cambosos Jr. is a mandatory, so I'm not going to say he doesn't deserve it, but I would rather see Devin Haney, Lomachenko rematch, then go to 140. That's what I would like to see for Teofimo. But he don't got to do it. Does Lomachenko deserve a rematch? You dismiss the idea of a rematch, so you dismiss the right or the fact that or, or any or claim that someone says you deserve it because you dismissed it. So he doesn't deserve anything. Should Teofimo fight him again? Yes. But does he deserve it? He doesn't deserve anything. Does Wilder deserve a rematch? He doesn't deserve a trilogy match. He doesn't deserve anything. Because if you was the big bad Wilder who was so much greater than Ali, you should have knocked Fury out in the first round, first fight, knocked him out in the second fight, and then it wouldn't be any talk of a trilogy. But you could not do that because you weren't the champion that your fans made you out to be. Now, that's no disrespect, but they had him over Ali and over the greats of all time. This is how they were talking about Wilder. So if he was that, then he should have beaten Fury twice back to back, beaten him, not draw with him, and lost to him. And with Lomachenko, if you were 100%, we're going to put your full skills on display and send Teofimo crying in the corner to his dad, and you don't need a rematch for him, and you didn't do that, then don't come back crying about your shoulder. Don't come back crying about bribery was in, the fix was on. Don't come back crying thinking you won anything because a few of your idiotic fans think that it was a TKO or, or, or you actually won eight to four rounds. Like, come on, man. You lost the fight. Both of you guys lost the fight. Good night. Bye-bye. You don't deserve anything. Should these guys fight you again? Yeah, sure they should. But you don't deserve a damn thing. And that's just how I see it, man. I don't care what no one says. Y'all know how I always in this thing. For the love of sports, let's talk about it. Peace.